This city is dead, like a morgue. The graveyard shift is about to begin. The witching hour, the same weary faces, night after night. This joint is heavy with a stench of sweat and cheap aftershave. I let it wash over me, blowing in the air like so much cigarette smoke. Who am I? I'm nobody. Good evening, ladies I'm everybody. A faceless man in the crowd that no one notices. You're beginning to turn ugly now. My heart begins that familiar beat. My skin bristles. Night after night, I force myself to face the world. Put my soul on the line, and for what? I can't even remember how this all started, how I even got here, who I am. A faceless man in the crowd that nobody notices. I am the invisible man. So it begins again. Let me get through to the end, just this once. Timing is everything. Comedy is my life. My life is a comedy. Why do I do this? Maybe I meddle in things that men should leave alone. Perhaps I held the balance of life and death in my hands. My memory is a fog, like a half-remembered dream. Could be this is a dream. Could be this is a nightmare. Fuck off. He starts unloading his life story on me. I swear I've heard this before. There's a dame involved. And betrayal. Deja vu isn't what it used to be. My memory is beginning to clear a skeletal hand reaching out from the water. Words flow from me now like a well-rehearsed speech. You think you've got it bad? I've broke bread with monsters, freaks, and assassins. I've been hurled into a full-blown zombie apocalypse. I've looked death squarely in the eyes and stood at the abyss, and all because of some lame Christmas party. Lame Christmas party. Obviously, you've never had to spend Christmas at Dracula's. Let me set the scene. It was a dark and stormy night. You know the kind. Sort of night when the cold blows through you instead of around you. The kind of night you wouldn't send a politician out in. The sort of night when anyone with half a brain was tucked up safe in bed. Because this night was filled with something more than shadows. Something terrible. It lurks in the dark recesses of your mind. Let me shed more light on this story. My reputation is in tatters, Igor. Bye, master. I was at the slaughtered lamb bar and grill, drinking a nice pure glass of virgin blood. When in walked Frankenstein and the boogeyman. They were talking about a Halloween party thrown by the Grim Reaper. Great by all accounts. Drink this, cocaine there. Grim is the new Prince of Darkness. I used to be the Prince of Darkness, Igor. Yes, Master. Yes, she was. There, Igor, not was there. I'm sorry, my lord. You vert the Prince of Darkness. Grim has all the respect now. I used to get all the respect. What do I get now? Nothing. I've changed, Igor. I'm not the creature I used to be. I've never told anybody this before. I'm suffering from depression. I'm weak. Mentally weak. Emotionally weak. Do you remember how it used to be? Crawling amongst the shadows. 
drinking the blood of every virgin this side of Transylvania. I want those days back, Igor. I want the fear back. I want me back. Take no notice of me, Igor. I'm drunk. Go back to sleep. You're right, master. I miss the old days too. Perhaps I could help you. Help? We could come up with a plan. S something to show people that, that you are still the true Prince of Darkness. I think you're on to something, Igor. Get dressed. We need to brainstorm. Think, Igor. Think. It has to be something really cool. I live by the motto, what can go wrong? We'll go wrong. We could all go bowling, my lord. And what if I lose? I look really pathetic then. What if we start a book club? Yes, you uh -huh. yes. That's it. We'll all sit around reading books. <laughs> really, master? No. What if we send everyone a box of chocolates with a card that reads From Count Dracula, the true Prince of Darkness Igor Shut up You're not good at this I'll go to bed now That's it! That's it! That's it! Brilliant! It's perfect! Why is it, my lord? He throw a Christmas party. Really? Yes! Everyone loves parties. Everyone loves Christmas. My family were murdered that Christmas. I throw the greatest Christmas party ever. And then, everyone is reminded that I am the true Prince of Darkness. No, my lord, it all sounds a bit cheesy to me. Sitting around reading books, isn't it? Forgive me, master. Yes. A Christmas party. And so the once powerful vampire and his companion hatched a plan to throw a Christmas party. Couldn't be simpler, right? Wrong. Who shall we invite? The Wolfman, my lord. Yes, let's invite the Wolfman. Really want to get to know that guy. Who else? Dr. Jekyll. Oh, I don't know, my lord. What if he, you know, breaks the other lad? No, don't worry, Igor. No more Mr. Hyde. He's off the drink. Praise be heavens above. Frankenstein, my lord. Yes, let's invite Frankenstein. Make cheer him up. What was his dad, master? Had some kind of falling out. Anyway, none of our business. Who else? The Invisible Man. Don't forget the Invisible Man. Certainly won't, my lord. Beelzebub? Christ, no! What's wrong with you? Bringing up a name like that in here? Forgive me, master. You bastard! Did it, speaking of bastards, the wicked witch put her down. Okay! Refresh my memory. We have the Wolfman, Dr. Jekyll, Frankenstein, the Wicked Witch, and the Invisible Man, my lord. Sounds like a sausage fest, Igor. 
We need more women. Medusa! Put down Medusa. I like sausages, my lord. Go and see to the invitation, Seagull. Fucking Igor. Here's 50 euros. I want you to go and get food. Nice food. Lavish food. Expensive food. Understand? Good boy. <laughs> Don't tell me what it is. Keep it as a surprise. Everything looks good. The living room looks like Santa's kingdom. You've got nice food. The invites have been sent. Here's to a wonderful evening tomorrow night. So Dracula's plans were in motion. But even the plans of vampires can be overtaken by events. Now you look somewhat better. Oh, they're here, they're here, Eagle. Quick, quick, answer the door, quick. No, no, wait, wait. You put on some music. I'll answer the door. Wait, I'm coming. Here, I'll Welcome. What's going on? Yes, indeed. Welcome, Wolfman, to my home. Enter. Welcome to my home. Enter freely and of your own will. And leave some of the happiness you bring. Oh, uh, nice one for him, boy, huh? Oh, bro. It was my pledge. Jesus Christ, what the fuck is that thing? <laughs> that is my houseboy ego. Fucking hell. Yeah. Oh shit, what did you blow it up? The fuck you do? Just uh, pour water in a glue, huh? <laughs> <laughs> fuck. I'll get that. Fuck off, man. Wait to see Wolfman. Do you think he heard me? Well, I'm not gonna get. One minute, I'm coming. Oh, it's cold. Wait a minute. I... Let, me, let, me, open Let me open the door. One minute. I, I'm here. Stop knocking on the door. It's oh, time. Well, Wait here, a right? minute. I hear you. Come I'm on, here. Try. You have to lift and push at the same time. What? Wait a minute. Who's now, lifting? Am I, I lifting? will lift. And you come will push. On. He's lifting. I'm on, pushing. Okay. On the count of three, you okay, push. Come on. Stop knocking. I hear you. I'm here. One, two. No, what? wait for three. Oh, wait. I God. have to lift and you God. will push. We're pushing, I think. One. Okay. Right. Two. Not yet. Don't push till I say oh, three. Or three. Oh, oh, I'm I'm here. Knocking. I'm here. Fucking door. One. Stop it. One. Right. Two. Okay. Three, no, you lift the door! No, you push! Lift it! For fuck's sake, push the door! I'm pushing the door! I'm telling you to push the fucking door! Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. That's it, pushing it. It is it you're looking for. Hi, Dracula. Frankenstein. How are you? you 
welcome. Bad. Thank you. Come, come, make yourselves at home. Come, come, let's have a party. Igor, it's your turn. How are you doing, Frankie, lad? How's your dad? You are right down, loser. That's fine. Bad hair day. No. Because uh, the snakes down in our head were fairly, uh, fairly fucking dead. talking about? What's he talking about? This is where I came in. Be back in a tick. Sometimes a man gets a sense of foreboding. His primal instincts kick in. That tingling rush of blood to the head. But not me. You see, a man like me, an outsider, has to find companionship wherever he can. It's the hand I was dealt. And that night, the dice was loaded and the cards were stacked against me. <clears throat> right, since you are all here, I would like to take this opportunity to thank you one and all for coming and to wish each and every one of you a happy and a prosperous Christmas. And to make a promise to you all, I will make this party the best party you have ever been at. And to make this night a night to be remembered! <laughs> How's Enfield get, man? He's... Hi. Where is he? Who's for dreams? <laughs> Igor! <laughs> Igor! <laughs> Igor, do that thing I told you to do. <laughs> Christ, no, not that thing. The other thing. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck, this is <laughs> Dreams. Dreams. Darkness is falling. You will have to make a choice. The killer inside you will be reborn. Beware! The end will begin with a bang! Oh. Oh. Don't mind me. It was probably nothing. I get it wrong all the time. Anyone for food? Igor! That was weird. I hear she's on drugs, my lord. What? Her? Bollocks. They're getting hungry. What did you get in the shop? <laughs> oh, for fuck. 
fuck's sake! So, Igor, look at me when I'm talking to you! I gave you 50 euros to get me nice, expensive, lavish food for this party of mine. Am I correct? What? Speak up! You're supposed to. And answer me this. Why have you blown all of my money on fucking wagon fields? And you didn't stop there, did you? No, you only went and bought 37 packets of the fuckers who even eat faggot meals! I do. So let's go back and answer me! <laughs> oh, stop crying, I can't be doing with this shit! Get me the phone book! Come on! <laughs> fucking Igor! Hello! You had the pizza delivery place. Just one cheese pizza. And a bucket of chicken wings. Chicken wings. And a bottle of orange, my lord. Chicken wings. A, a, bottle, a bottle of orange, my lord. And one bottle of Coca Cola. I'm not allowed to have Coca Cola. <laughs> okay, how much does that come to? 37 euros exact. 30. You have a nice night too. Wanker. Igor. If they find out I didn't cook the food myself, they will think that Green's party was better than mine, thus reducing my chances of regaining my Prince of Darkness title. Here's the plan. When the pizza man comes, you give him the money, take the pizza from him, and somehow sneak it in here. We plate it up, and I'll pretend I cooked the whole thing myself. Now, you go out to the guests, entertain them. I will wait in the living room for you to arrive. Got it. Got it, my lord. <laughs> what are you doing, darling? I'm updating my Facebook status. This party is so shit. Sure you only came out of sympathy? There we go. Status updated. This one simple act would change humanity as we know it. You really need to think before you put anything on social media. You never know who's going to see it in this world or in the next. Son of a bitch! Why wasn't I invited? Bastard. Now I get it. He must be trying to compete with my party. Still my thunder trying to reclaim his Prince of Darkness title. <laughs> that shit wants to compete with me. Well, compete he shall. And I will watch him fail. I'll watch as his world crumbles and falls into a pile of... dust. Lee? John? I've got a little job for you. <laughs> Pay a visit to Dracula's castle. We'll send him a, a little surprise. <laughs> yeah. So we kill this bastard and get out of here. Got it? Yeah, whatever. Are you the pizza delivery guys? Uh, no, we're not. Lee and I are distant relatives. I'm afraid I...
can't recall you. Oh yeah, we are cousins of your cousin. We're here for the party. How old are you guys? We're aged mid-twenties to mid-thirties. Come on, come in, come in. Come. Welcome to my house. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to my home. Enter freely up. Folks, we have some new guests. These are my cousins. Lee and John. What's up? Take a seat, let's take a seat. Good, good. I'll go to the kitchen to check on the food. Back in a moment. Stay here and let's drive them off, follow them up. John, what is it you do? Oh, I am a plumber. And so Oswald headed off to face Dracula. The gun filled with silver bullets with crosses carved on the tips, laced with cyanide, dipped in garlic and doused in holy water. Fuck it, he wasn't taking any chances. Hell, he even stopped to tie his shoelaces on the way. Now all he had to do was pull the trigger. One shot, and the vampire would be dead. Job done. What if he missed? What if those myths were just old wives' tales? What if this creature turned? <laughs> Saved by the bell end. Oh, Lee, Lee, you nearly gave me a heart attack. What can I do for you? Oh, uh, I, I was just uh, uh, looking for your finest uh, caffeine based drink. Not a problem. Igor, get him a coffee. <laughs> Oh, come here. Don't knock. What is it? Don't you call it cat? It's what? Gold. It's beer, honey. Oh, uh, I can't drink on the job. Sorry. I thought you said you were a plumber. Ah, oh, shit. I said too much. I got a secret I gotta share with y'all. What? Are you gay or something? No! I am not a plumber. I am an assassin. A hitman. And so is his lead. You were gonna tell something crazy or some shit. <laughs> Are you not afraid that I am a killer? <laughs> You're the most normal one of us. Compared to us, a killer is nothing. Fuck it. YOLO, that's how the saying goes, isn't it? Anyway, Lee can take care of it. <laughs> Hello? Hello? Is that the pizza delivery place? Yes, I'm ringing you about my order. No, I don't want orders. I'm ringing you about my order. You're an hour late. What is happening? Yes, my guests are waiting. Dracula. Dracula. D or A C U L A. Dracula. Yes. Can't. Count Dracula. I'm expecting a discount on this 20%. This 15. 10%. That's okay. A bottle of Coke. Okay. Sorry about this, folks. Food will be small bit longer. While we are waiting, I have a surprise up my sleeve. Please be beer bomb. What was that? Wait, so we can't go up? No, we can't. Karaoke! Ah, 
Che pizza sia! Pizza? Ai Sneak the pizza past him. I'll be in the kitchen pretending to plate up the food. <laughs> Dracula, right? <laughs> 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 Just some, uh, uh, just some Barbara. Tell them the truth. Shut up! <laughs> For fuck's sake, Igor! I told you to bring pizza! Not the pizza and the pizza boy? Fuck it! Now they'll all know I didn't cook the food myself. <laughs> Not in front of the pizza boy. Uh, Dave. Not in front of Dave. <laughs> Sorry, Dave. And what's your excuse? Well, an hour late? <sighs> Teenagers! Igor, there isn't enough food here to feed my guests. Damn it, anyway! What about the freezer, my lord? No, all we have is pizza and fucking wagon wheels. Think, Igor, think! <laughs> <laughs> Dinner is served. What is it? It's a uh, pork. <laughs> Why is there a four star pizza cap in mine? Oh, bollocks. Throwing a party? And I ain't invited. Ironic, isn't it? I stole your thunder at Halloween. Now you're trying to steal mine at Christmas. You're always one step behind Dracula. What do you want? Did you hear the story about the art collector? Who couldn't get his hands on that one piece. Now this guy had the best. Picasso's, Da Vinci's, Van Gogh's, all except that one. The most valued of all. Rare, beyond all belief. Oh, but he tried. Oh, he tried. For years, he became ruthless. It became an obsession. Well, I am that collector. And your soul is that painting. And I need to have it. And I am going to have it.
still very quiet. You've not said a word since you got here. It suddenly hit me. I didn't belong there. Who was I? What had I become? Stuck between limbo and no man's land. I had to get out of that room. That's better. I checked my look in the mirror. Wait, you heard that, right? A gunshot? Yeah. This is where things start to get dangerous. Let me rewind for a moment. He's dead, what I think it is. Yeah, it is a carton of orange juice. Oh, let's for fuck's sake. I said no drink. Who the fuck chose a party with alcohol? What are you? A pussy? I'm not getting into this with you. I'll take a coffee. I'll take a coffee, asshole. No. Oh! You're just jealous because I killed the better one. Killed the better what? Fuck you too. Fucking fraud. I mean, I clearly killed the better one. Yet you go down in history. That's what I cannot understand. All those conspiracy theories, the driver, the mafia, the second shooter, the grassy fucking gnaw. I have none of that. I shot the gun. Job done. <laughs> You're pathetic. Living to this criminal name you got. You can't even admit to what you did. Nothing. You are a glorified scapegoat. A conspiracy theory. A living lie. I killed the better one. Kill the better one. Tell me. You have some explaining to do. Allow me to properly introduce myself. My name is Lee Harvey Oswald. And that sorry sack of shit is John Wilkes Booth. What are you doing here? Well, the Grim Reaper sent us here to kill you and fuck up your party. Kill me? Look. Allow me to tell. It all began in hell, but it's not how you imagined it. Hell is a bar. A bar so evil, Hitler is still giving orders. Ah, so fuck. I did not. Don't touch me there, it could be construed as inappropriate tonight in front of all of hey, these people. Hey, Berkowitz. A bar so dangerous, Jimmy Savile had to wear a disguise. I wasn't buying into his shit. And there's Cleopatra, still holding men under her thumb. What's your mom doing? I haven't seen her around a lot lately. She's fine. She's just like one of them birds up there. Fucking psycho. Bundy and Shipman tried to pick their next victims. While Dr. Lecter fell victim to a life less suave. Mara Hindley and Vlad tried to hide their affair, while Gaddafi embraced his with the woman who put cunt in country. And this cranky bastard is Lucky Luciano. 
Anyway, getting back to the story. One day, Death walked into the bar. I was hoping you could point me in the direction of two gentlemen. Hold on a second. Show me your ID. Oh yeah, of course. Fine. Who are you looking for? Two of your finest assassins. <laughs> Those morons. They're over there. Oi, Savile! Put your hands away. Are you, uh... Yep. Are you so... Young? Yes. Internal youth. Right, of course. What can we help you with? Well, you two do know who I am, don't you? Yeah, we've heard about you. The guy who uh, appears to people before they die, right? Well, we do a bit of that ourselves. It's nice when your hobby is your profession. As you know, I appear to people and they're supposed to die. But I don't have the power anymore, let alone the willpower to kill anyone. It's all getting a bit too much for me. What do you want us to do about that? I need someone to do the killing for me. I appear to the people, you kill them. Sound good? It's fine by me. Yeah, sure, we'll do your dirty work. And that's what we did. And every time someone was meant to die. Death would appear, and we'd do his dirty work. Just when my memory turns to dust, and when my conscience starts to rust, I'll throw away my plans to be the nothing left. But I understand, I've got no mind, I've got no sense, got no will to represent, so unaware of where to start. Daughters, mothers, riders, even bald people. Hell, nobody was safe. I don't think his heart was in it, but me? Well, I liked it. Made me feel more real. When we are arguing about who killed the better one, we meant who killed the better president. Oh, uh, any chance of another coffee? Get out! You're, uh, you're lucky that it's him who has a bullet in his head. Not you. <laughs> Tell the zombie, Hudson. Don't be ridiculous. Hitler. 
Interesting. Everybody's got choices to make in this life. It's time I made mine. Make myself visible again. Be somebody. Shed this skin, this illusion for the world. I'm tired of being a passenger. Tired of being a bit player in someone else's movie. Tired of being an invisible man. Yeah, you're on Late Date with Alf. Now, getting back to that kind of disturbing message that I received earlier from a caller who said that there were, and I quote, zombies roaming the street in her area. Apparently it's official. Government ministers are holding an emergency cabinet meeting tonight as I speak. They're said to be on the verge of declaring nationwide martial law. That's right, nationwide martial law in the face of a full-blown zombie apocalypse. Now, these zombies are said to be highly dangerous and contagious. Uh, we'll try and get uh, an update on that one for you. But people are asked to stay calm, stay indoors, and above all, stay safe. And uh, what's even more important, keep it right here on Late Date. Now, a classic oldie from the archives. Looks like we're stuck here, girlfriends. It's impossible. There's only one way the dead can come back to life. And that's by reading from the Book of the Dead, which I have in the... Kitchen. Some strange reason Dracula kept the Book of the Dead in his kitchen. Oh, shit! Looking for the book of the dead. What have you done? I brought back the dead, didn't I? Oh, that puts you in a rather awkward situation, doesn't it, Dracula? After all, you you can't feed on contaminated blood. And the dead are very hungry, oh, very hungry, and they're feeding on the living, and the living become the undead. And soon, your entire source of food will be contaminated and you will starve. You will destroy all of humanity just to have my soul. Well, there's a special providence in the fall of a sparrow. If it be now, it is not to come. If it be not to come, it will not be now. If it be not now, yet it will come. Readiness is all. You know your Hamlet, Dracula? Act 5, Scene 2, you prick. We have a lot in common, you and I. You kill, I kill. I kill because it's my job. You kill to feed. Drain the lifeblood of people and you keep their souls. Souls that belong to me! You have a debt, and it's time you repaid it. You're insane. For centuries, mankind has sought to destroy me. Many still do. All it takes is one stake. Here, you have as much to lose as I have. Eventually, you too will starve. I offer you one soul in exchange for mine. Here, now, return the dead to their graves. We both live to fight another day. Now this is the point in the story where everything changed. All bets were off. When Dracula returned, the book was gone and he was mad as hell. He railed against the world. He cursed humanity. He spoke of revenge and retribution. But he was clear on one thing. I had to kill one of you. What were they to do? The only thing they could do, beg for their lives. You're right. They are dead. <laughs>
Put down the newspaper for a minute. I have something I want to tell you. Have you ever wondered why I never liked any of the girls in school? Well, I'm gay, Daddy. Fuck's sake. There's your bag. Get out. What? There's your bags. Get out. Don't call me dad. I didn't make you to turn out like this. And after all the hard work I put in by making your bride, this is how you treat me? Take your shit and go. But I'm your son. That's all right. You can always make myself another one. And I'll get the mats right this time. Everybody goes through some kind of transformation in their lives. Some for better, some for worse. But Jekyll experimented on himself once too often, and this accelerated his changes. And now, whenever Dr. Henry Jekyll becomes angered or outraged, a startling metamorphosis occurs. The creature is driven by rage and... Oh, fuck it, you get the idea. For a long time, he sat in silence, contemplating who would live and who would die. I was philosophical. I realized a long time ago we're all heading in the same direction. No one gets out of this life alive. It's just a matter of timing. When the blows are struck, and just how well you make an exit. But in the end, he got us to put our names in a hat. To be honest, I expected more. Our fates were now in the cards. I'm taking the chance. The gamble. Pulled out the name. Igor, my friend. It has to be done. My greed has pushed me to make the ultimate sacrifice. We have never given Igor the respect he deserves. The only way I can give him respect now is by giving him a quick death. Another companion? Nina. Are you really killing another companion? friend. 
Is it him we should be killing? It's you. How long has it been, Dracula, since you roamed and you rotted on this coil of earth? The wars you lived through. All the evils you caused. Lives you've torn apart and continue to tear apart. This world simply cannot go on with you in it. What would another death do? You've killed so many as it is. In fear. Look at you. What have you become? You're not the man you used to be. You'd kill anyone with no remorse. Not a care in the world. Now, you've gone soft. You've lived your life. And now it's time to admit you've reached the end. It's not the end. It's the start. The start of a whole new chapter. Kill yourself, end it all! Kill him! Be reborn! I never thanked you for the present you gave me, my lord. It was quite lovely. But I am sorry about the wagon wheels. It was quite funny though, my lord. Gotta go to bed. Good night, master. So once again, Oswald took the road less traveled. I guess we're all looking for some kind of redemption, to prove our life was worth something. And who doesn't dream of a second chance? A chance to beat the odds, to be the one they remember, to be the hero. <laughs>
Fear are all your wagon wheels. Wolfman! Wolfman threw them out the window! What? He, he threw the wagon wheels out the window! Why? Because they're all hungry outside, and I thought if I just grab the lightning and fuck them out the window, it'd keep them away, do you know? But no. Do you know why? Surprise, surprise, it brought them in. They're angry on Why? Because the food I threw out the window, like this party, is shit. Dead shit food would have fed us all now that they're starving. But no. Go ahead and throw them out the goddamn window. Listen. Don't. I am this close to smacking you. Fuck. You need to vent. I get that. It's not my fault that you went and butchered your fucking friend, is it? Yeah, that was a bit below the belt. My party. My rules. In it, my party. I rule. Now get out! What? The, the, the zombies will get me, Lee. And what makes you think I won't? Thanks. Fuck it. Now. I'm sick of being walked all over. It's time that I fought not just for my life for the fate of all humanity. Dead thinks he has won. And I will see that he loses. I face my destiny. And fight the Reaper. Will you die? It's a chance I'm willing to take. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to kill death. You escape the zombie horde, but fate has a cruel way of sneaking up on you. And of all the forests near all the towns in all the world, he had to walk into zombie JFK. Is a spell J F K. You know I love to lift with your eyes on me. Words falling from your lips so gracefully. Blood in your blood and your heart open wide. I reach into you. My friend. Enough. We could keep this up for all eternity. The dead 
or getting close, drawn by the ever-present stench of blood that surrounds you like a mist. Time is out of joint. How will you collect your precious souls now? I'll collect them as we speak. Corporal time means nothing to me. But to hold your soul, Dracula, your perverse, rancid, foul soul. Oh, that would be something indeed. What do you have in mind? Let's fight on a plane worthy of creatures such as ourselves. An intellectual plane. A battle of minds. For the biggest stakes yet, your immortal soul. And if I win, you can fuck off and leave these creatures to me. This battle of the minds, what do you propose? Contest of wits. A test of intellect. A series of conundrums, and as we both deal in death, I suggest we stick to what we know. Agreed? Agreed. Picture this. For my trinity. A married couple are driving on a lonely country road on an autumn night. The car breaks down. The man tells the woman to stay put while he goes for help. To ensure her safety, he locks the doors of the car so that absolutely no one can gain entry to the car. You no longer fear death, Dracula. That will be your downfall. You are too familiar with it. You no longer appreciate it. That will be yours. When the young man returns several hours later, he finds the woman dead and a stranger in the car. The doors of the car are locked. There are no signs of forced entry. Has there been a supernatural occurrence? Nothing supernatural has occurred. Did the stranger have a spare key? Is that your answer? No. Just establishing the fact. The stranger has no key. Is there blood on the sea? The woman is covered in blood. Her own blood. I have it. The stranger in the car was the man's newborn infant son. The woman died in childbirth. Two men, miles from civilization, no one else around. Both men wear identical backpacks. The backpack of one man is open and empty. The other man's back is closed and full. The man with the closed backpack is dead. What was in the backpacks? 
he took a gun out of his backpack and shot him. No bullet holes. He took a knife out and stabbed him. He must have taken something out of his backpack. The survivor had no hand or act in the other man's death. Right! He didn't do it. Right. We're in the middle of nowhere. Hmm. Well, it's not like he fell out of fucking scot. Their backpacks contained parachutes. The dead man's pack never opened. Correct. Can you hear them getting closer? What music they make? The children of the night. Do you feel the Reaper's hand on your shoulders, Dracula? Picture this. A forlorn look on his face. Suddenly, the elevator judders to an halt. What's wrong with him? He's just realised that his wife has died. What was the cause of death? It's so obvious. A man is in a hospital visiting his wife who is in a coma. Being kept alive by a life support system. When the power cut stops the elevator, the man realizes that the power is also cut from the life support system. Ending his wife's existence. They're almost upon us. Time and tide wait for no man. Or thing. Picture this. Two aged men play chess, both bound by the same act. One has dedicated himself to saving lives. The other is paid to take them. Two men playing a game of chess. What's at stake? Life itself. Shortly after dawn, when the execution has taken place, one of these men will be sitting right here. Explain. Right. Two men are playing chess. One man is paid to save lives, and the other is paid to take them. Does this plane ride have a significance? For the traveller it does. Yes. Oi! Wait! I need more than that. Play fair, Dracula. This man is a doctor. He has taken an oath to save human lives, as such people do. After a long and fruitful career, 
His world is devastated. And his wife is diagnosed with an incurable disease. Day after day, he watches her struggle with the pain. Until finally he gives in to her request and ends her suffering. The inevitable court case follows, and now a convicted man awaits his death. Ow! Oh, this is a prison cell. We have a man who's an executioner. More than that, these men are related. This man is mourning the loss of his sister. Oh, brother in laws is. Oh, Dracula. This is good. This is good. You are a worthy opponent. So the act that binds these men together is death. Correct. Oh, I like it. You spin a wonderful tale, Dracula. Symbolism, analogies. Metaphorses, but in the end, an easy deduction. So the man on the plane is the executioner. Having killed his brother-in-law for the death of his sister, he decides to go on a journey. None of these souls are wheeling travellers. You cheated! You cheated! You lose! I hate it! I hate it! I hate it! Wait! Wait! I don't know the answer! I hate it! It was the doctor! Wait! Wait! Dracula! Dracula! Wait, I have the answer! I have the answer! Dracula! That's right, bitch! Say my name! Seems the spell is truly broken. Oh, my friends, what have I done? I have saved all of humanity. You have, Dracula. And I, for one, want to thank you for it. You are the light at the end of the tunnel. A hero in a veil of darkness. You can't are all right. Everything was as before. The apocalypse was over. Humanity would never know how close it had come to the abyss. But none of us would ever be the same again. Dracula returned home. Solitary vampire. A hunter free to roam the darkness and to haunt our nightmares. Every story needs a villain. The world needs its bogeyman.
Well, that's my story. Have you figured out the punchline yet? It wasn't Dracula who sent death hurtling to his doom. It was me. I dragged the Weeper to hell. Me, an ordinary Joe Soap. And nobody, a faceless man in the crowd. You see, one man can make a difference. It just depends on the price he's willing to pay. Every man makes his own choices. Every man has his own hell. And tomorrow night at the witching hour, this will all begin again. Thank you. 